having access to choices and a lot of choices is one of the things that makes fishing so interesting for me. Especially interesting in a place like southeast Louisiana where you have a big estuary, you have a lot of different fish, you have a lot of different conditions that you're going to encounter it forces you to make decisions and that makes it fun. We've got good options tomorrow. We can go out to the Long Rocks. Uh, I know it is time for trout to start moving in and I, don't know, I, I know some of the bayous where they should be in September and uh, using those as highways to get in to follow uh, the shrimp that are trying to move out, the white shrimp. I really have more, I have access to more lures than I have time to fish them. And every day is different and every day is going to dictate what I'm going to fish with. Some of these are David's lures as well. Um, together we have quite a collection of lures, like this live target croaker, which I still haven't caught a fish on. I haven't really fished it much. Looks like it has a lot of potential. It has this big paddle tail, really large surface area, really swing around. Um, it's got that realistic look to it. It's got access to so many lures. I got a number of I got a bunch of different dark sleepers that I can play with. Uh, I want to try some top water for sure. And of course, you know, I've been fishing this Rapala Shadow Wrap really quite, quite a bit in the last two months. Doing well with that. And of course, we got a lot of these twitch baits that I love, like the this is a Miradine. Or the uh, the soft dine, sorry, the soft dine. I believe that's an XL. Uh, these are really great baits. So maybe a little bit early for me to start fishing these. You know, of course we're for sure going to be fishing with some jigs with swim baits, like that Matrix Shadow Ultraviolet. Um, can't forget that one. There's so many good lures out there. This particular jerkbait has done well for us, and David's fished it more than I have, but it's a, it's a Rapala Husky Jerk. And uh, this color, I mean, look how chewed up that bait is. Probably most of those scratches came from trout that were caught off the Murgo Rocks uh, in St. Bernard Parish. So, so many good choices. Um, of course, you know, I've got the assortment of the Voodoo brand lures in here and the Voodoo shrimps and then there are some of their minnow baits as well, which, you know, these, these are all good, good options as well. Caught fish on all of these. Um, I'm going to go with four rods hooked up. You know, I'm going to have a cork with uh, you know, some kind of swim bait tied on 8th ounce or 16th ounce jig head with a swim bait on it. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to tie on a top water and I'm going to have another swim bait. I guess I'm going to do to tight line. I'm probably going to start with one of these dark sleepers. And I'll, I'll do the I'll do one of those uh, jerk bait. I'll probably still have a shadow wrap start with. Salinity has been high. I measured up as high as 17 parts per thousand uh, out on the edge of the marsh. Uh, kind of the Christmas camp lake area. Very high salinity out there. So salinity is really coming in. Even up uh, on the south side of the Murgo Dam, the salinity was like 8, 8, uh, eight 9. You know, I carry a conductivity meter with me when I go out in the water because uh, that way I can, wherever I'm at, I can find out what the salinity is there at that particular location. And I also carry an environmental meter. I can measure wind speed. I can measure water temperature at depth. Um, even measure light intensity of the day. And, and you know, light intensity turns out as important when fishing. 
especially if the water is fairly clear, then light intensity begins to have an effect. And it, essentially, too high a light intensity can move the fish around and actually turn them off a bit. So what I'm doing here is checking salinity. So I have this conductivity gauge. If I just check the water directly, it's over the sensitivity limit on this one, which is 20 millisiemens per centimeter. So what I have to do, now I didn't need to throw that out. What I have to do is do it, I have to do a dilution. So I will take this little shot glass and fill it halfway to half an ounce with the seawater. And then I come in with water from my water jug up to one ounce. Not so I have a 50% salt water solution. And that puts it at 11. So I keep a chart. That's the, my comparison between conductivity and salinity. So if I look at this, Conductivity, remember 11 was half of it, so it's 22. So it's approximately this green line. That's about 12, 12 and a half PPT of salinity. It's really been hot this August in September. This is the third week of September, and it's still over 80 degree water temperature. Every day is in the 90s, uh, you know, heat index is close to 100 degrees, and um, it's really kept the water temperature up. And you know, water temperature is one of the reasons that the trout move out in the summertime. I mean, they've got to spawn, but I mean, if you think about it, why would you find small trout out there in numbers? They're not spawning, so why are they out there? And I think one of the answers to that question is that you get some cooler water temperature than you would in the marsh in the real shallow water and, and there's also more access to deeper water that they can get away to to cool down uh, and so I think this high water temperature we've been having lately is just you know it's keeping it's been keeping the fish out um, though they are starting to come back in and I'm seeing more reports and coming in it's, it's been really hit and miss for me lately in the last maybe three four weeks uh, I, haven't, I haven't been able to fish quite as consistently uh, this August but uh, it's been hit and miss had some good days uh, had some really poor days too and you know, that's not surprising for September you might find a school and do well or you might not find anything except throwbacks and uh, you know the keepers just may not show up Plus, we've had storms coming through, and the storms have pushed up the water level. And the last time we were out, the water level was very high over the docks, down at the Hopedale Marina, and um, messed with that messed with the tide for sure. In a big truck, he misses me by about a foot. The redfish tournament going on launching today out of Hopedale, so it's crazy here at the launch. But. Uh, we're making decisions, and the decision that we've made is to go to the Long Rocks. Bottom? No. 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 
Maybe not. They're even picking in the channel. There anyway. Oh. So now the decision is to either chase the birds. They're still diving on shrimp. They're kind of smaller trout around those. Or go to the rocks and look for bigger trout. So I guess we're going to do both. Cool. Small, but they sure are hitting it hard. Oh, that sounds good. Wow, really? Oh, he's really tiny. Look at this. So, even though the birds are diving here. Seem to be pretty small trout. Not even the 12 and a half, 13s that we were finding back there. So, the decision is to move on, head over toward the rocks. What, what do you got? I don't know. Maybe it's digging. It's probably a hard head because I left my lure on bottom for so long, digging for a bait. Oh, uh, one of these nasty things. Well, there's a decision for you. <laughs> Leave your bait. Leave your bait on the bottom. Leave your bait on the bottom while you're looking for a different one, and here's what your results are. And that's what you get. So we've been struggling for the last few hours because it got really rough out where we were catching trout, and we went inside, and the water was beautiful. Uh, but there was not whatever the trout needed was not there and it's just no fish there it was protected and it was green water but nothing so we've gone back to the theory that well first of all all the fish we caught were somehow associated with birds there were there were always birds around the fish that we caught so we decided to see if we could find some more birds and they, we've come on a flock here of galls sitting down, which is fine because they're sitting down there very well may, tr may be trout in the area. So we, uh, we're gonna follow this theory for a bit. Actual fish this time. Trout, smallest one. made a good decision back there yep. to stop with the birds sitting on the water. That was a good decision. But when we moved off the school, they were gone. So we stopped in a, a very busy bayou because it's on the main drag. But this is a spot where the current carries, when you have an incoming tide, the current flows just perfectly around the corner here. And it carries a lot of bait in here. Trout really like to be in here on a falling tide, uh, on a rising tide. Oh, there's a big there's one. Yeah, yeah there's another. Right fish. in the middle. Another one. That was another white. Um, it it might like have been. Yeah, some people decide not to go trout fishing in September. And uh, I'm not going to disagree with you on that decision because uh, September is. Pretty hit and miss, can be pretty unproductive, and um, well, we had some reasonable productivity today, uh, but you know, Dave and I like to get out regularly and fish, and uh, we'll go out and battle in September, see what happens. So one of the decisions that I made today was to fish top water when uh, I'm under a flock of birds, and it, especially when you have still water or reasonably still water, 
I didn't use it much in the really rough water when we were uh, when we were around birds, but um, definitely in the flat water, uh, there was there's some logic to think that you can pull some larger trout out of the heap of small trout that you're going to find under flocks of birds like that, and uh, so that's why I do it. And it's also fun catching trout with top water and. Uh, the jerk bait the, that I had, that shadow wrap uh, in the olive green, which has been doing so well for me in the last few trips, uh, just did not do anything today. It just, <laughs> it was not the right day for a jerk bait. I uh, just couldn't catch any fish on it. And, uh, actually, I did catch a fish on that jerk bait. Oh, there's one. There's a fish. That's a trout. I think, I think it is. Maybe a catfish. It look like a big fish. <laughs> the catfish. Gaff top. Hard head of all things. Hard head on jerk bait. That's a wrap on the day. The next time I go fishing, it'll be October. And I hope you had a good September and uh, that you'll have an even better October. Good luck out there. Six.